A group of concerned scientists, researchers, and academics, including Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking, are warning that a military artificial intelligence arms race could soon develop if preventative measures are not taken. The group sounding the alarm in an open letter presented at the International Joint Conferences on Artificial Intelligence in Buenos Aires. Let's say hello to the Fresh Outlook Think Tank. I am joined by Dr. Bart Rossi, political psychologist, Jose Lopez, physics professor at Seton Hall University, and Tom Gagliano, life coach and published author. Jose, this is right up your alley. I would argue that the killer robots are already here. We call them drones now. <laughs> Well, I, I would argue that artificial intelligence is everywhere. I mean, our planes are, are, are flown by, by autopilot. Our cars are by wire. Basically, you're not making decisions of how you're gonna switch your gears. Everything is done for you. So the artificial intelligence is here. The definition is wh what is artificial intelligence? Well, the, these scientists, these engineers, Elon Musk, Stephen Hawking are saying, when it exceeds human intelligence or gets to at least the level of human intelligence. And that's when it starts to get dangerous because that's when they start making decisions that are not programmed into them by humans. So when they're actually learning, that's when they start to get dangerous. And I would imagine, uh, and this does sound like it's a Terminator because that's what happens, <laughs> right. the robots rise right. up. I would imagine a genius could create a computer that could think as well as an average person. No, that's that's no? total science fiction right now. No, okay. the, the, there's what's called the tur Alan Turing, the the father of uh, of computers, basically came up with the tur what's known as a Turing test. If you uh, if a machine would exceed human thinking, if you, you would have three pe three f three things involved, A, B, and C, and A would be a human, B would be a computer, and C would be the person asking questions. If that computer B could could figure out uh, and answer the questions like a human, and the and the person who was asking the questions who couldn't see whether it was a human or a computer was was confused and thought that that's when. But machines are not even there. Computers are not even close. That's total, total, total science fiction. But I would think, considering what this device can do right now, it can right. get me home better than it can get myself <laughs> home. <laughs> right. Um, that it's not out of the question that this is. 10, 15, 20 years down the yeah, road. Yeah, it's, it's definitely getting there. It's definitely getting there. I mean, artificial intelligence is, is in the 70s and 80s, especially with movies like 2001 Space Odyssey and The Terminator in the 80s. These fears started, but science fiction is so far ahead to what reality is right now that it's, it's not a fear. But are we talking 20, 30 years down the line? Could it get to the level where the turning test, where you, you would confuse a, a computer with a human? Possibly, but it's not there right now. What these, what these scientists are doing, these engineers are doing, is they're being straightforward. And this is the time to start thinking about the morality of this, about, about programming into these computers the decisions of whether, you know, should I kill a human or should I not kill a human? This is the time where that debate should start happening. So I think that's a good thing. Well, I kind of feel if it can be created, it will be created, no matter what obstacles are put in the way. Once the knowledge is out there, people will build upon this. Right. Doctor, this could be a game changer, though, for countries. If you could assemble an army of soldiers that would go into a situation, uh, a hotbed situation, and fight the war as opposed right. to human beings doing it. That actually might be a good thing, right? Right. I mean, well, in, in, in some ways, it might be terrible in the other, but, right. but I think the psychology of this is very threatening. It's very ominous, and, it, and it's dangerous. And Dangerous. And I think there's that whole side to it that, that we, we have to look at, and it's, and it's going to have to be researched, and, and, it's, and it's very dangerous. I, I take a different view, a little bit different view on the other side, though. What about the positives? Uh, artificial intelligence, for example. People who have post-traumatic stress, for example, are very hypervigilant. They can't get rid of these certain thoughts that they have. Uh, they go through a lot of pain and suffering. Well, I think artificial intelligence, where you can get them to refocus, uh, do different tasks with artificial intelligence, I'll bet that that would help them, It'll help a lot of people overcome some of their difficulties, some of their personal conflicts. So there's the good and the bad. There's the war end of this, and then there's the, 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 the shining take light. a person like that and weaponize right. him. Yeah. That's what most countries would do, right? <laughs> yeah. Tom, what are your thoughts on, you're seeing some of the images here, by the way. Google is developing a robot in conjunction with a Boston firm as well. And right now, they're actually walking a lot like dogs or um, insects, as you see, because they tend to be more stable than standing up on two legs. Well, I'm just hearing this, you know, what comes to me is, is do we know when we're in control or when it controls us? Like, where, where is the line between knowing that we're in control of this whole process 
and when we think we're in control of the process, but it's controlling us. I think it's human nature for people to always want to move forward. We just in, have that inherent curiosity to keep going forward, going forward, going forward. And not that we mean to hurt anything or step on any toes or do anything wrong. I think just that's what we do. And I just listening to, maybe I saw too many science fiction movies. I gotta tell you, I love The Terminator. Right. It's a great movie. And maybe I'm thinking in terms of what I've seen on TV, which you're the professional here, not me. But I just always think of what is that point when I think I'm in control and I'm not in control. All like, you have to when do, does it do is look at somebody who can't find their cell phone and you realize <laughs> the cell phone's in control. Jose, what would be the problem of having robots fight our wars rather than human beings fight our wars? Well, if they're, the, the drones are not autonomous. They, for example, they require a human being to be making the decision whether to shoot or not shoot. If they're completely autonomous, then this is programmed into the machine, into this, into this robot, whether they should shoot or not shoot. And of course, it could get to the Terminator level, where if it's, if it's a killing machine, its job, its one num only function is to kill. And that's when it starts to get dangerous. For example, it could be programmed to identify a certain person's DNA yes. and attack a certain race of people or a certain ethnicity. Wow. <laughs> uh, is the technology there for that? No, I mean, it, it uh, but, but... Through uh, retinal scans and that type of thing? Yes and no. I mean, it's, it's not... So, so Hollywood has done so much for, for robotics that, that people are really warped that they think that's right. what's out there. But it's not, Logan. That's true. It's not out there yet. But <laughs> everything... We see these walking dogs and insects on the floor, and that's really where the technology is at this right. point. Right, and it's very crude. Yes. I mean, I could run circles around one of those yes. robotic dogs right now. But if you look at the Minority Report, <laughs> right. a movie by... By um, Tom Cruise. By Tom, with starring Tom Cruise. Right. A lot of that came true. The flat screen TVs, the uh, TVs, the touch screen technology, the retinal eye scans, the facial recognition software. So this is all out there. It's well, a matter of finding the next Steve Jobs to pull it all know, together. To, to, I, I think the real problem is not going to be whether these autonomous war machines are going to be out there. I, I, I think that's not an immediate problem. I think the immediate problem is what, what was brought up already, which, which is if they're running your lives. I mean, we, we know what's happening in the Industrial Revolution. Machines replaced humans in factory jobs farming and different things and now we have artificial intelligence on our smartphones that is really effectively helping us run our lives I would say to an extent helping us I, I find that I'm more curious now because I can Google something very quickly or watch it on TV or watch a YouTube uh, on it or something like that that I think has helped me but when when artificial intelligence gets to the point where it's making all the decisions for me you know my one well, my favorite show we were just talking about earlier is person of interest where the machine or the Samaritan as it's called there is making all the decisions for me then that's the scary point but that's there, the tipping point but there are some algorithms out there from looking at all of your viewing and reading patterns yes. that can predict that you would like person of interest and they exist right now because yes. Google News predicts every <laughs> news story that I want to read we're gonna have a whole lot more after this this when we come back it is time for the lightning round where we look at the week's top stories and lightning fast